Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 26 August 2021. It's Thursday night, 9 o'clock. That means it's time for a knife sale on the Apostle P channel. Before we get into the meat of the sale, let's do a little bit of housekeeping first. And first of all, I need you to be familiar with and agreeable to the terms of the sale. I will post them on the screen for you in just a moment. They're also going to be reprinted in the description under this video. Also in the description, right above the terms, you're going to see three links to prior videos on this channel. The first is to my Primer for Buyers video. That is a 38-minute expanded explanation of the terms. So please be familiar with that. If you're new to this sale, you might want to give that a watch. <clears throat> the second link is to my FAQs for Consigners video. If you're interested in using this weekly sale to move along some of your collection, watch that video. It explains how it all works from the consigner's perspective. And then the third link, as always, is to my rates and services video for the Apostle P Knife Service, the original precision sharpening service for the online knife community. So in the description, to sum it up, you're going to see those three links, then the terms of the sale, and then last you'll see the long list of tonight's inventory complete with timestamps to the video on the left side and pricing on the right. You will normally see two prices in that pricing column. The first is my as shown price and the second on the right side of the slash is your price as sharpened by the Apostle P Knife Service. There will be six spots available for next day sharpening this week. So the first six knives purchased to be sharpened tonight will be done and shipped tomorrow with the as shown inventory. That's Friday the 27th. So just a normal garden variety huge mega knife sale tonight. I'm going to put the terms up on the screen for you and then we'll be right back with the sale inventory. Here are the terms. All right, let's get to it, shall we? First up, we have two leftovers from last week, but only one of them to kick off the sale because one of them goes with the Oz Fetting or Leukemia Fund donation section at the end of the sale. So first up tonight, <clears throat> we have a traditional slip joint pocket knife. It's going to come in a knives ship free, deeply pebbled leather pocket slip. The knife is from the now extinct Amherst Cutlery and it is a subtly swell centered curved handle trapper it is the Amherst Cutlery large trapper four and one eighth inches of closed length you've got beautiful stag covers nickel silver bolsters and end caps brass liners there is the match on your stag, chunky and symmetrical. We've got cam tang actuation of a main muskrat clip in 154cm stainless. The secondary blade in a standard trapper is going to be a spay and that's exactly what we've got. Beautiful cam tang walk and talk, nice and smooth. Pull weight is about a six and a half, centering also dead on the money. Condition of this knife is like new, no box, but with that knife ship free slip. I could not find any price reference for the large trapper, but similar, similarly equipped other patterns from Amherst are selling selling 
on eBay between 200 and 250. We ran this one last week at 180. <clears throat> Didn't sell. Dropped it to 150 on Saturday. It's still here. So somebody gets a bargain on a piece of American traditional slip joint knife making history. 130, 130 your price as shown. 160, I sharpen both blades. That's the Amherst Cutlery Large Trapper. Next up, onto the fresh stuff. And here is a piece of history. If you are a Cold Steel fan, you're going to be all over this. This is the Cold Steel Tylite Titanium. Uh huh. So it is going to be a stainless steel liner lock, but the handle scales are bead blasted titanium. Straight pocket clip. It's going to be right hand tip up only. And it just gets interesting from here. There's your blade. Notice the deeply stamped Tylite model name on the show side. On the back side, Cold Steel made in Japan. So blade steel on this one's going to be VG1. There's your lock engagement. And guys, there is a very slight bit of vertical play. <clears throat> so that lock bar, you could take the knife apart, disassemble it, get rid of that. But I don't think they worried about that too much when this knife was made. There's your blade centering. Very close to down the middle. Condition on this, like new, no box. <clears throat> Obviously, this knife is no longer obtainable on the new market. I saw them selling on eBay between 175 and 250 in sold completed transactions. This one can be yours like new, no box, 150 like it is, 170 with an Apostle P edge next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. That's the Cold Steel Tylite Titanium. Next up, this, my friends, is something special. <laughs> Let me just figure out how to do this because it's big and heavy. What we have is a tomahawk from Smock Knives. And this envelope contains the certificate of authenticity and a Smock sticker for the back window of your car. So this is the SKX15 Tomahawk. Made August 24th of 2018, the blade or the the blade steel is 80 CRV2, which is a lot like 1085 Crovan. Signed by Kevin Smock. This tomahawk was purchased directly from Kevin by my consigner. Comes in a Kydex sheath with a super sturdy clip. I'm not sure you're ever gonna wear this on your belt. Um, and then you've got a retention strap that snaps on the back side. Out comes the hawk. <clears throat> so dimensions on the SKX15 Custom Tomahawk. 14 and a half inches in overall length. You've got gray G10 scales. A lanyard hole. And a pry bar. And then in the blade of the hawk itself is a variable size wrench, the smock maker's mark, and the coating on this is called a battle-worn Cerakote. If you notice, it's two layers, blue underneath, black on the top, and then on the edges, the blue is revealed. Pretty nice maker's edge. I'm going to give you an edge sharpen price, but guys, it's... It's an expensive custom hawk. It has a really good maker's edge. So I'm not sure you want me to mess with it at all. It is like new with COA. My consigner paid $450 for this from Kevin directly. It can be yours. Shipped priority mail. And guys, the shipping is probably going to be $20 for priority mail. But all in, shipped to your door, U.S. mail priority, $350 like it is. 370 if you want me to sharpen it, but you probably don't. That is the Smock SKX15 Custom Tomahawk. Next up, I'm going to make you see double. We've got a pair of classics, my friends. And these are going to be separate, separately sold. 
uh, but you're only going to see one listing because they are absolutely identical. This is a pair of Kershaw 1670 TTSST Tonto Blurs, and they're both like new, no box, and they are both very well centered. Let's see, I'll show you that independently. So I'm not even going to give you a one and a two listing. I'm just going to put the listing down in the inventory one time, and then you know they'll show sold when both of them have been bought and paid for. So what you got is black hard anodized aluminum handle, track tech inserts, old style parkerized Kershaw clip, a tiger stripe DLC blade in Tonto configuration with combo edge. Rock solid lockup. There's your lock engagement. They're like identical. So yeah, that is the Kershaw 1670 TTSST Tonto Blur. They are out of stock. When they were in stock, they were 50 bucks at your favorite web retailer. These 45 each, 70 with a possible P edge next day sharpening available if they're one of the first six. Next up, you're seeing double again. These are the HK14701 Entourage Automatics. I have two of them. You will see one listing because they are both like new, no box, and they are identical in features and condition. And they're both uniformly off-center, very slightly to the right. Okay, let's explain what they are. <clears throat> You've got a four and three quarters inch handle, button lock automatic with spine safety, Tonto blade, D2 steel, made by Benchmade of course, now discontinued the HK line. Blade length is three and three quarters inch, looks like a Cerakoted D2, lock up rock solid, centering as I said slightly off to the right. Great bench made action. Get some hard anodized black aluminum handle scales with G10 inlays on both sides and the clip is reversible so the lefties are going to be pleased. These are <clears throat> discontinued and out of stock, extinct, never to be made again. When they were in stock they were 120 at the last clearance price I could find. One of these can be yours for a hundred bucks, like it is, 125 sharpened. And I will show this inventory entry sold when both are gone. Okay, that is the HK Entourage 14701. Next day sharpening available if they're one of the first six. Next up. From Gerber, we have kind of the latest version of the Applegate Fairbairn folder. This is the Gerber Covert Fast, F-A-S-T, which is an acronym for the Spring Assist Slash Locking Mechanism. So you've got that Applegate Fairbairn handle in G10, a stainless steel lined. Uh, it's going to be tip down right hand only carry, I believe. I don't think you can swap that clip on this knife. You might be able to. So your opening action, you've got a safety, I think, yep, that locks the blade closed. When you see red, it's ready to fire. Then it's just a spring assist. But it's kind of a blacky Collins piston lock. So to unlock it, you push that safety forward, okay, and you close the blade. There's your spring assist action. Lockup is great. Blade length 3 and 5 eighths inches of 7CR17 MOV steel. Combo edge. Lockup is rock solid. Centering is hard to see, but it's, I wrote down, perfect. So it must be awful close to right down the middle. It's like new, no box. You can buy these knives right now at Blade HQ for 58 bucks, brand new, or just buy this one, like new, no box. $40 shipped, priority mail. 60 with an Apostle P edge. That's the Gerber Covert Fast. Next up, we have one from Ratworks. This is a cool knife, guys. 
It's the Ratworks Chain Drive MRX Auto with the smooth hard anodized handle, tip up right hand pocket clip, hard anodized black aluminum. It's a button lock auto with chain drive. Uh -huh. So notice the teeth in the spine of the blade. I think, you, yeah, there you can see them without the chain wrap. The blade on the MRX is CPM 154, 3 and 5 eighths inches in length, bi-directional satin. I think that's a flat saber grind. Rock solid lockup. Blade centering right down the middle. Action is beautiful. We have no box with this one, but it is like new, no box. These are currently out of stock. When they were in stock, you could pick them up for about $330 at your favorite web retailer. This one can be yours, $250, $250 like it is, $270 with an Apostle P. Edge. That's the Ratworks MRX Auto. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. Next up, we have another set of twins. Check this one out, guys. And again, there will be one listing in your inventory, but there are two. So I will show them sold when both are gone. These are two like new no box examples of the Meyerco 18 X ray automatic designed by Daryl Ralph. I'll just show you one because they're both perfectly centered and they're both like new. So what we got <clears throat> is a five inch hard anodized aluminum handle with Daryl Ralph texture on the show side, smooth on the clip side, which is gonna be right hand tip up or tip down. And it's a pretty cool lock. You push the button forward and then push in. So that is its own safety. You have what appears to be a DLC coated blade and the blade steel, I think it's printed on here. Yes, it is. 154cm. Blade length is 3 and 7 eighths. That beautiful Daryl Ralph sort of drop spear. Lockup is rock solid. You saw the blade centering. Action is lovely. Condition like new no box. <clears throat> Huh? Price, 80 bucks, guys. 80 bucks like it is. 100 sharpened by the Apostle P Knife Service. Next day sharpening available. That's the Meyerco 18 X ray automatic. <clears throat> Next up, if you've got a, an auto knife itch that needs to be scratched for like almost no money, here you go. This is the Boker Plus. AK-74 Kalashnikov Automatic. This is the FRN scaled version. Okay. You've got a four and a quarter inch handle, button lock automatic, OS 8A blade, bead blasted finish. Blade length is three and five sixteenths. Lockup is perfect. Auto action is super snappy. Centering is off to the left a little bit. Like new, no box. Your price, 30 freaking dollars shipped. Priority mail. 50 with an Apostle P Edge. That's the Boker Plus AK-74 Auto. Next up. Man, I need to own one of these knives. I don't own one. I should own one. This is the Mikov Tech lever lock stiletto so other than having you know the the traditional finish and handle materials of the normal Mikov line this is the Mikov tech with blasted g10 handle scales and blacked out hardware tip up pocket clip i can't tell you for sure if that goes side to side because i do not know looks like it's got proprietary hardware so i don't think you're going to swap it um Handle length is 4 and 11 sixteenths, plus the glass breaker Latin or lanyard hole. The lever lock, you flip up the lever, you press it, and out flies the blade. 
that is a dagger shaped blade unsharpened edge on the spine combo edge some unknown stainless steel two-tone and finish as with most lever locks there's a little tiny bit of side play to unlock the blade just press the lever down again and close it centering is down the middle and action is lovely condition is like new no box um, good luck finding a pricing reference I couldn't <laughs> but you know uh, I think these are Czech Republic knives is that right and they've been in business this knife company has been in business I think since 1794 mm -hmm. how about that your price a hundred bucks got to be worth that doesn't it 120 with an Apostle P edge. That's the Mikov Tech Lever Lock Stiletto. Next up, Microtech fans, this is your moment. We've got the new style box. Inside it resides a Microtech LUDT OD Green Handle Scales. Easy for you to say. Apocalyptic Standard Finish. Particular LUDT was made this spring, April of 2021. There's your handle. There is your perfect Microtech blade centering. There is your perfect Microtech automatic spring action. There's your April of 2021 born on date. And if you can see it down here in the plunge grind, the blade steel is indicated and it's M390. <clears throat> it's perfect in every way. It is like new in the box. These are, as usual, out of stock everywhere. When they were in stock, they were $249 at your favorite web retailer. We'll cut you some slack on this one, boys. $225 like it is. $225 as shown. $250 with an Apostle P edge. Next day sharpening available. That is the Microtech LUDT. Next up, more auto knife fun. This time we got a black box from Benchmade. Inside it resides one of the newer automatic offerings from Benchmade, the 3400 BK-1 Autocrat. This is a cool knife. If you like the Infidel, but you think it might be a little heavy and you don't like the way it shreds your pocket, <clears throat> the Autocrat is for you. It sports some nicely milled OD Green G10 handle scales, a Parkerized deep carry clip that'll go left or right, and that handle length is 5 and a 16th. From out the front flies this blade, a double edged dagger blade, DLC coated, S30V steel, first production run knife. That blade length is uh, three and three quarters inches long. Medium button effort. And because it is a bench made out the front, the reliability is 100%. Beautiful knife. This one, like new in the box. <clears throat> they are currently out of stock, even the production models. When they were in stock, map price was $399. This one can be yours. Shipped priority mail, 325 guys. 325 on the Benchmade 3400 BK-1 Autocrat. <clears throat> Next up, a little Benchmade run continues, this time with the 556-S30V Mini Grip, which is now the standard Mini Grip. And guys, they have just kept making this knife better over the years. So this is the base model mini grip. So Norl GTX handles in black with better texture than ever. But look what they've done. Parker has shorty deep carry pocket clip and the blade steel now no longer 154 cm. It's S30 V guys. This particular example is about as perfect as it gets. Free drop and blade rock solid lockup and dead down the middle blade centering it is like new in the box map price on this one if you could get one new they sold out quick at 106 this one can be yours 
$80 shipped priority mail. Are you kidding me? 100 with an Apostle P. Edge. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. That's the Benchmade 556-S30V Mini Grip. Next up. Oh my gosh. Might be the last Benchmade in the sale. Uh -huh. Blue box. Model 319 Proper. So this is kind of the proper everybody wants. OD Green Canvas Micarta Handle Scales <clears throat> on the Modern Fusion Slip Joint. The blade is that modified Warncliffe in S30V. It is a half stop slip joint. The action is what I call proper because all the bench made propers have, let's just face it, not great walk and talk. This one, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's better than most, okay? Two and seven eighths blade, three and seven eighths handle. The centering is down the middle on this one, guys. And condition is absolutely like new in the box. Map pricing on a brand new one at your favorite retailer is gonna be 127. This one can be yours, shipped priority mail. 110 like it is 130 with an apostle p edge that's the benchmade 319 proper next up i don't think i've had one of these in my hand this is from tops knives and just in case you were wondering tactical operational products uh -huh. inside the box comes the tops fieldcraft 3.5 aka the Mini Bros, the Mini Bob, Mini Brothers of Bushcraft Knife. Comes in a beautifully made, I think it's Kydex. Yeah, it's just really thick. And you've got your awesome, awesome clip that rotates to any angle you want it. You got your whistle thingy in there. You got your canvas micarta handle with boat drill divot and then here's the knife the black texture coat on the flats blade length on the fieldcraft 3.5 is actually three and five eighths inches it's scandy ground but there's a little micro convex on the edge um, it's not the best scandy edge in the world but it's not bad Handle length is four and seven eighths. Super good in the hand, by the way. Condition on this one is absolutely like new in the box with all of its tops goodies. Great snap, no rattle. They do it right, guys. Uh, web price on this knife, you want to buy a brand new one, is 100 bucks at your favorite retailer. Or just buy this one, like new in the box, shipped priority mail for 80 bucks. 100 with an Apostle P edge. That is the Topps Fieldcraft 3.5 or Mini Bob. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. Next up, we got a little run of traditional slip joint pocket cutlery, all from Titusville, PA, but not all from GEC. But the first several are from GEC. And first up, from their Northfield Unexcelled line of premium pocket knives, we have a Benchmade. <laughs> Benchmade. A GEC number 14 Lick Creek Boys Knife, model 141118 in dark red jigged bone. And this will be a DLT special factory order. Notice the oak leaf shield, the lined bolsters, the plain end caps. The most gorgeous clip point blade ever made. Polished finish, Northfield etch, long pull cut swedge. And guys, this is a little knife, but it's got a man's pull. I'm calling it a seven. Perfect walk and talk. Perfect centering. Condition like new in the tube. And these DLT exclusives are kind of unobtainium. They're not coming up for sale. This one can be yours though. 130 like it is. 145 with an Apostle P edge. Next day sharpening available if you're one of the first six. That is the GEC Northfield Lick Creek. The GEC Northfield Lick Creek. Next up, 
we have another one from Great Eastern Cutlery, but this is the Cripple Creek Special Factory Order, that brand now owned by Smoky Mountain, right? Model 141218 and Natural Canvas Micarta. This will be in your inventory as GEC Cripple Creek number 14 boys knife. Satin finished, bolsters and end caps, satin finished, natural canvas micarta. There's that Cripple Creek Bizen Shield, as my old buddy Don Booth used to say. Lined bolster, plain end cap, main clip point, with Cripple Creek etch. Again, a seven pole, perfect walk and talk. There's your secondary pen blade. Everything is beauteous. Now, this knife is like new in the tube, but it's got a little beauty mark in that satin finish on the bolster, as many of them do. Okay. Your price on this one is going to be one, 120, 120 like it is, 135 with an Apostle P edge on both, oh, no, 145, 145 with an Apostle P edge on both blades. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. That's in your inventory as GEC Cripple Creek number 14 boys knife. Next up, oh my. <clears throat> From Great Eastern Cutlery's line of Tidute Good as Gold trademark knives, we have a number 15 Tidy Cutlery Barlow, and this is the one y'all want, the one you can't get. 152121 in smooth autumn gold bone. So the first of the TC Barlows that are not SFOs for Charlie Campania. And guys, they made several cover materials in this run. You had your glittery ones, you had your sock up bone, but the ones that are bringing the money are the smooth autumn gold bone versions, and that's what this is. Single spear, oh, and what a spear it is. Beautiful, good as gold edge. About a six and a half pull, we'll say luxurious walk and talk perfect centering like new in the tube like new in the tube and guys now most of these other cover materials are selling like in the low 200s not these sold listings on eBay and they were several between 340 and 360 this one can be yours and look at that streak of white oh. this one could be yours 320 like it is, 335 with an Apostle P edge, next day sharpening available. The GEC, number 15, TC Barlow. Next up, another one from the Tidiute line from Great Eastern Cutlery. It's a number 15 Huckleberry Boys Knife model, 152118 in OD Green Linen Micarta. Man, these are so special. That OD linen is so beautiful, and this one really shows off the grain of that linen micarta. All steel construction, polished bolsters, plain end or bare end, bare butt, as some people like to say. There's your main spear point blade, just beautifully set and finished with a drawn swedge. A strong seven on the pull weight. Beautiful walk and talk. Centering is very close, but maybe slightly off to the right. Condition's going to be like new in the tube. Your price, 150 150 as shown. 165 with an Apostle P edge. That's in your inventory as GEC Tidute, number 15, Boys Knife. Time to turn the page. Next up, one of my personal favorites, as you know, from the Northfield Unexcelled line of premium pocket knives, finest premium pocket knives, we have a number 38 English Whittler, model 380321, 
in burnt orange jigged bone, which is my favorite form of this latest run. Gorgeous jigging, a big sort of melted peach seed. Man, is that gorgeous. The English Shield, rat tail bolsters and end caps. Split back Whittler construction. Main Warncliffe with the unexcelled sort of English font. Cam Tang, beautiful walk and talk. Everything is beautifully centered. Half stops on the secondaries. You got one pen, one coping. And man, those are beautiful. God, everything's just done so well on these. Condition on this one is like new in the tube. Like new in the tube. About a seven pull on that main, by the way. Your price, 185 shipped priority mail, 185. 220 if you'd like it, with an apostle P on an apostle, an apostle P edge on all three blades. That is the GEC Northfield number 38 English Whittler. Next up, oh, all right, Sodbuster fans, here you go. From the Farm and Field tool line from Great Eastern Cutlery, we've got a 71 Bullnose. And apparently you guys can't find them in this cover material because they are bringing more money than all the others. Model 715117 in natural canvas. Freaking micarta. Yeah, here you go. Oh, yeah. Oh. I love how the natural canvas goes so well with the rivet they've used for the pivot. Now they've left the heat treat scale around the perimeter. It just looks beautiful, man. It looks like this knife could have been made 100 years ago. Drop point blade, strong seven and a half, maybe an eight pull. Bull nose edge, set and finish. Oh. Whack. Yeah. I think our centering is pretty much dead. Ah, yeah, it's close. Kind of hard to see on camera, but it's very close. Condition, how about uh, like new in the tube? I could only find one natural cam, and there were like 70 sold listings on eBay for this model, but one in natural canvas sold. It was a best offer accepted, listed at a buy it now of 160, so I don't know what it sold for, but I bet you I'm close. Let's do 130 on this one, 130, and 145 you'd like it with an Apostle P edge. It's in your inventory as GEC FNF. Bullnose. Next day sharpening available for two of the first six. Okay, we're going to wrap up our GEC segment tonight with two very special knives. Here's the first one. From the GEC Northfield Unexcel line of premium pocket knives, there's no tube label on the end cap, but there is here on the back. From 2007, we have number 52 out of 56 produced in the number 73 Scout Trapper in Ram's Horn. Oh my guys, would you take a look at that? There is your stamp for number 52 and the beautiful nickel silver bolster. There are your Ram's Horn covers and they're nicely matched. Blade set, main drop point set and finished with a big bright Northfield etch. Pull weight, we're going to say seven and a half. Walk and talk is stunning. Secondary spay, again, seven and a half. I'm not sure what that etch was. Some of you may know. Both blades are beautifully centered. Condition is like new in the tube. Looking up pricing references for this one, I found one sold listing on eBay for a knife like this one. Same covers, and it was, I can't remember the serial number, but out of that same 56 piece run, it sold for 400 bucks. This one, somebody gets a deal. 
325 like it is, 355 both blades sharpened. That is the Northfield, GEC Northfield number 73 trapper. Okay. Next up, if you thought that one was special, how about this? From the Great Eastern Cutlery American Pocket Knives line from Great Eastern Cutlery, we call these the acorn knives because of the squirrels and the acorns. And no label on the tube end cap, but here you go. On the back of the tube, and these are before we had those uh, six digit model numbers. It's a 73 Scout Trapper EC in midnight black, made in 2007 number 41 and I could not find how many were run but it wasn't very many and guys I can't tell you what the actual composition of that material is it looks like black Delrin GEC just called it midnight black nickel silver bolsters and end caps brass liners the square or closed end it keeps pocket lint out 440 C blades I guess I should have wiped those down a little better. There we go. Main drop point. And that etches the same uh, same graphic that's on the tube. It's kind of hard to see with the reflectivity of the blade. Pull about a seven and a half. Perfect walk and talk. There's your secondary blade spay. Oh, there it is. One of 250 total. But probably not in midnight black, I'm not sure. Uh, there is your etch number 41, okay? Or your stamp number 41. <coughs> Condition on this one is going to be as like new in the tube as it can be. There's going to see a little tarnish on the brass liners, but. It's a beautiful example. Uh, only one pricing reference on eBay for this knife. And it was an auction that sold at $260 plus $30 in shipping. And I think there were 32 bids. This one can be yours. $225 like it is. $255 for me to sharpen both blades. Next day sharpening available. That is the GEC Acorn 73 Trapper. Next up, we're going across town. We have one from Queen Cutlery. <clears throat> it's a number 48 split back Whittler in Red Stag. Check this one out, guys. Now, this knife has been used and carried and used, and it's been sharpened, I believe. Look at that Red Stag. There's your match. Nice. It is a split back Whittler with a brass center wedge spacer. Main clip point blade. And that st the etch is very light, but it says Queen Cutlery Company Classic and then Red Stag. Blades are D2. Three and a half inches in closed length. You have a secondary pen, and those are also on cams, and a secondary coping blade. And to give you an idea, my consigner knew what he was doing sharpening. Pretty nice edges. I'm going to give you a sharpen price, but I don't recommend it because it really hasn't been used after it was sharpened. You're going to see a little bit of pocket wear in the nickel silver. So we'll call this excellent to near mint in box. <clears throat> um, again, I had a hard time finding a pricing reference. I did find one sold listing on eBay that was a jigged bone set of covers, not as valuable as Red Stag. It sold for 140 plus shipping. This one can be yours, 135 like it is, 170 with an Apostle P edge on all three blades. It's the Queen number 48 split back Whittler. Next up, oh, 
Guys, if you're a fan of Japanese pocket knife history, here you go. From Almar Knives, we have a Hawk Classic in Kokobolo, number 162 of 200, a limited edition, numbered run, and many of you have, don't even know this series of bird knives from Almar. Um, they were made by Moki in Seki City. Now this is an early one. How do I know that? Well, there, and look at that Kokobolo. How do I know it's an early one? Got a little tarnish on the brass, but that's what, 30 seconds and some flits. Well, here's why. Not only does it give you your serialized number, but it says Moki Japan. The later ones did not say Moki, even though Moki made them, which I think makes this one kind of valuable. Um, mm -hmm. They're, of course, gone. They're out of stock. I think the last pricing reference I saw for these Hawk Classics was 130 But those were modern production. And this one, man, such beautiful action. Rock solid lockup. Beautiful midlock. Blade centering dead down the middle. Ah, just so cool. And that little Almar slip. Uh, so what are we going to do here? This one, because of the because of the age and uniqueness and the numbered thing, we're going to do 140 on this, like new, in the box with slip. 140 like it is 155 sharp. And by the way, the blade's two and a half inches in length. The handle's three and a quarter, uh, and the blade steel is blade steel is os eight on these. Uh, let's do 140. 140 like it is. 155 with an Apostle P-Edge. Next day sharpening available. Next up. Oh my. Oh my. I told you guys, and you're in the middle of his stuff tonight. I told you guys I had an old seasoned collector with great taste who's finally letting go of some of this stuff. Um, and you're not going to believe this one. I don't even know when's the last time any of you have seen one. Look at that. Chris Reeve Knives, 14 years of excellence, 84 to 98. Yeah, this knife was made in 1998. It is a Mountaineer 1 left-hand sheath. Okay, Mountaineer 1. Here's your birth card. A2, 55 to 57 Rockwell. Aluminum cap, mm -hmm. June 25th, 1998. And there is a there is a Kydex left-handed sheath in the box. I'm going to show you the factory leather that's hardly been used. Inside resides the knife. So here's the Mountaineer. Four and a quarter inches of blade, and this is an integral knife, all made out of one piece of A2, except the cap is aluminum. Beautifully threaded O-ring seal. Hollow inside, there's nothing in there. Man, they cut those threads so nicely. Can't remember what they used for coating back in the day, some kind of gun coat. Now this one has been carried and used. It's been lovingly sharpened by my consigner. Uh, the handle length on the Mountaineer one is three and seven eighths. Plenty of handle there though. And then if you come forward, Chris Reeve hollow grind. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. I'm gonna call it excellent. Um, let's say excellent in box. I found one sold listing for a Mountaineer one on eBay. And it was frankly a mint condition knife and it sold for 600 bucks plus shipping. Uh, on this one we're gonna do 495, 495 like it is. And if you would like me to sharpen it, add 20, so 515. Let me show you this kind of sheath before I put this away. There you go. 
Again, left hand orientation on the kydex. Okay. So yeah, 495 like it is, 515 with an Apostle P edge on the Chris Reeve Mountaineer 1. Next up, this is so cool. I told you this guy's got taste, guys, and he knows what to buy. Ontario Knives Hossum. This is the Retribution 1, the large size version of the Retribution. It is a folder. No pocket clip. Comes in a beautifully made ballistic nylon sheet. Nicely lined. And check this beast. Now these were made, I think, by Lion Steel, but it's definitely a Maniago knife. Your handle scaled in layered black and green linen micarta. Thick titanium liners. It is a titanium liner lock knife. The blade is Bowler N690CO. There's your Italy N690CO edge. A rectangular opening hole. Beautiful recurve, kind of a muskrat clip. I think lion steel because look at that convex edge. Blade length on this thing is four and five eighths. The handle six inches. That beautiful coke bodily girthy awesome handle. There is your lock engagement. Zero blade play. Centering favors the lock side slightly. Action's beautiful. Condition on this absolutely like new in the box. Like new in the box. Uh, pricing reference, good luck finding it. They're long discontinued. They're long out of stock. The last pricing I could find was 125 bucks, but I can't remember where, and I think that was a clearance price. They're unobtainium now. Your price on this one, 120 like it is, 150 with an Apostle P. Edge. That's the Ontario Hossum Retribution 1. Mm. Next up, this knife has a story. I am bound to secrecy on the name of this consigner who's brought us all these wonderful knives. But when I tell you this story, you're going to know where I met him. This is a Lon Humphrey custom knife. It is a Kephart. Now it says the handle is micarta black with orange liners. <laughs> and it is. And it is 3V. But there's a story. First I'll show you this uh, Jenna Martin designed, beautifully crafted hunk of leather. Variety of carry options, completely ambidextrous. All of the appliances are removable and configurable. Mm -hmm. Here's the knife. Oh yeah. Lon did such a good job on these. 52100 blade steel. I'm sorry, 3V blade steel. Wrong entry. Four and a half inch blade, four and three eighths inch handle. Now this is not a Lon Humphrey handle. This was rehandled by Skittles at Bark River to Brian's specifications. So notice the Coke bottle. I don't know if I can, there you go. It's so good, so good. Lon Humphrey knife. Skittles handle, rehandled at Bark River by Skittles, man. Uh, so yeah, these these are long out of stock. This knife would have been two hundred twenty-seven dollars at DLT when it was new, but you can't find them, and that's the price for a stock one now with the custom handle. So yeah, your price on this one, guys, two fifty, two fifty like it is, two seventy if you'd like an Apostle P edge on it. That is the. Lon Humphrey Kephart custom handle in your inventory. Uh, let's see. Next up. Oh. oh. It's from Bark River Knives, and you're going to notice when you see the X. It wasn't made yesterday. This is a gameskeeper, but that's kind of the wrong box. 
I guess it's not the wrong box. It's been reboxed because that's a newer label. But they put the right info on it. Okay. Now this is going to come with a, a waterproof treated left-handed bushcraft style sheath. But I'm going to include a right hand sheath. Okay. Because he had one available. Now, here's the knife. Check this out. It is a gameskeeper. But look, does that etch tell you something? Yep, it wasn't made yesterday. How about that? Custom 2011. This was made for the consigner whose name I cannot reveal. By Bark River, handcrafted by Skittles. Uh, A2 blade, four and a half inches in length. Natural canvas micarta handle with red liners. The handle length is four and five eighths. It's ground beautifully. Um, oh, yeah. So this is a one of a kind gameskeeper, guys. Like new in the box. Your price on this one, two twenty five, like it is. 245 with an Apostle P. Edge. And see your inventory as the Bark River Gameskeeper Custom 2011. Okay, what's next? What is next? Ah, check this out, guys. From Cold Steel, we have a Raja 2. This is a fairly current production Raja 2 we have an FRN handle with beautiful texturing made to accommodate a tip up clip left or right hand and the lefty clip is in the box handle length you can't hardly get it in the frame handle length 7 and 7 eighths out of the handle comes this thing a 6 and 1 eighth inch blade of beautifully stone washed AUS 10 A steel. You have your thumb plate slash pocket hook to deploy the little blade out of the pocket. I'm not going to show you the action because I don't have enough room. But here I'm just going to do a you know, one of those dump flicks. Listen. <laughs> huh. So the action is super sweet. The lockup is rock solid. The centering is off on this knife. It's not quite rubbing, but it ain't good. Okay. It does have an Apostle P edge. And I don't think it's done any like rope test cut. It's still really nice. Okay. I sharpened this for this consigner a while ago. Uh -huh. So it is near mint in box with an Apostle P edge. Everything's squared away except the blade centering's off. Okay. Uh, so we'll call it near men in box you can buy these right now at your favorite web retailer for $110 but this one it, it's basically like new in the box but with an Apostle P edge which that would cost on this blade with the recurve uh, 35 bucks to, of sharpening you can buy this one shipped priority mail $100 that is the Cold Steel Raja 2 TAP Next stop. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. It's a beast. I'm telling you. It is a Lon Humphrey custom knife. And inside the box resides a gunfighter Bowie with black palm scales, blue liners, 52 100 blade. Oh my. What a piece of work this is. And I sharpened this one for this consigner as well. Look at that two-tone sheath. Beautiful. Got a popped stitch at the bottom. I think mine had a popped stitch from the factory. So that's probably like new. <laughs> Look at this, guys. Oh, the Gunfighter. My favorite modern Bowie knife of all time. It is. Look at that. Brute de Forge style. So you got your hammer marks, your forge scale. But then you've got this beautiful satin grind, the polished spine and belly. Oh, nine and a half inches of blade. 
And it's hard to tell because it's got some some rust preventative packing lube on it, but it's got an apostle P edge. I remember sharpening this. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that black palm. Uh huh. Oh, man. Oh. So it's near mint in box with an apostle P edge, $30 worth of apostle P edge. They're, of course, long gone, discontinued, not a stock. This would have cost, uh, I can't remember, $340 ish, probably, brand new at your favorite web retailer. But now they're gone. Unobtainium, not on eBay, not even sold listings. With an Apostle P. Edge, your price, $325, guys. $325 shipped priority mail on the Lon Humphrey Gunfighter Bowie. T A P. Put him back home safely. All right, time to get to the Oz Fetting or Leukemia Fund donation knives and such. We got some knives, some hardware, and some watches. So, first up, all proceeds after shipping go to the Oz Fetting or Leukemia Fund. We have a Benchmade 551 Griptilian with black D2 coated blade. Okay, and it's been used a little bit. Wear on the pocket clip. Wear in the coating. I think these were Cerakoted. I sharpened this for this consigner long ago. It needs sharpened again, just so you know. But look at that. Rock solid lockup. Nice free action. And I think the blade centering is pretty good, like down the metal good. Uh -huh. So let's see. How about, and remember, all proceeds to the Oz Fatting or Leukemia Fund. Excellent. No box. 65. 65 like it is. 85 with an Apostle P.I. That's a Benchmade 551 Grip BKD2. Next up, I'm going to call this the Kershaw Emerson Trainer Combo. Okay, the Kershaw Emerson trainer combo so first up you get a Kershaw Emerson Emerson and what is it what is that blade I don't know but you know you got your steel frame lock blue G10 scale there's your Emerson logo on the show side Kershaw on the off side and the model number on this is the 6034 train so if you need to learn how to use a frame lock, here you go, right? You get that, and you get this Emerson Karambit trainer that comes with a molded plastic sheath and a molded plastic knife. Now, frankly, I don't know why anybody would buy this. I, I, I don't get it, but my consigner did, and obviously after a while he thought, I don't know why I bought that. But you guys, here's the deal. Just buy it. You know, give it to your kids to play with. And you just donated after postage, you know, $17 to the Oz Fatty Girl Leukemia Fund. So $25 shipped priority mail. $25 shipped priority mail for the Kershaw Emerson Trainer Combo. Okay. Next up, got another one for the Oz Fatty leukemia fun and I probably didn't show this knife in the right place last week because I a consigner uh, had several donations for the Oz fund and I had them grouped in the video with the rest of his consignments so guys this is an Oz Fettinger donation knife from Elijah Isham it's his black star with the G10 and then carbon fiber inlaid handle a very cool little knife that's better than me. I'm, it's better than that. It's a flipper, and it's on bearings, but it's a detent slip joint. A 2 and 9 16 blade, gorgeous clip point, and 20 CV. Detent open and detent closed. And a gorgeous little front flipper. Flips great. It's perfectly centered. 
got a great little titanium pocket clip. You can pinch it open as well. The flipper never gets in the way. And this has got Elijah's edge on it. I think he uses a wicked edge on every one of his customs. And his factory edge is so good. I'm not going to offer you a sharpening price. We ran this last week at 175 and then dropped it to 150 on Saturday and it didn't sell. Somebody gets this and guys, this is a donation knife for the Oz Fighting or Leukemia Fund. 130 bucks this week, guys. 130. Like it is. And I think, what are these selling for? I saw one sold listing on eBay for 290 bucks. What's this still doing here? So yeah, 130 on the Elijah Isham Black Star. Next up, oh, this is fun. This is a donation for the Oz Fettinger Leukemia Fund, and we're calling this the Hinderer Hardware Grab Bag. I think I was supposed to keep this and use it for service, so, but I'm not going to do that. So, guys, if, you, if you're Hinderer heads, they're in that baggie. You got three assembly barrels. You got three standoffs. Here you got three more assembly barrels. Here you got one, two, three fill tabs. And you got standoffs, 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 more standoffs and screws, barrels. Looks like a pivot. So yeah, all that stuff. All that. Uh, I don't know how much they... I think they charge a pretty penny for that stuff, don't they? I don't know. But here's the deal. If you like, if you got handers and maybe you, you dressed them up with some, you know, fancy colors and materials and you, you uh, want to sell those knives and put them back to stock, there's probably stuff in here that you do that and then you can resell your expensive hardware. So let's do this. And you saw everything that's in here. I don't even know what it all is. Anyway, proceeds to the Oz Fetting or Leukemia Fund on the Hinderer Hardware Grab Bag. 40 bucks shipped priority mail. Okay, we're going to finish up the sale with two watches. And they're both donations for the Oz Fetting or Leukemia Fund. First up, we have one from Seiko. Uh, this is the SRPA83, which is a patty tuna. Okay, a patty tuna. And it's going to come with a gray NATO with polished hardware. It's going to come with a gray NATO with tumbled oval hardware and it's going to come with doggone it it's going to come with a factory blue silicone strap never been on I don't think uh, might have been worn once or twice and here's the watch oh my so yeah this is an automatic tuna running the 4R36 movement. The Professional Association of Dive Instructors, Sunray Blue Dial, Blue Ceramic Bezel, 120 click unidirectional that actually lines up. You got your blue case shroud. And I, that's either ceramic or some kind of really hard plastic. Stainless steel case. And he's running the NATO. But he left a protective sticker on, on the case back. Right. So dimensions on these, and they're really hard to dimension. Uh, 50 millimeters in diameter. But the lug to lug, the lug to lug is only 47, believe it or not. Okay. 
okay and then they're not that thick they look really thick but when you measure crystal to case back not that thick just 14 thick and then this, the lug width is 22. Now I did uh, get this thing running at time it for 24 hours it was 12 seconds quick which is pretty good very little to no wear on anything just some hairlines you know around the stainless steel portion of the case so really really nice <clears throat> with all three straps um, used watches selling sold listings on eBay between 350 and 370 this one I'm gonna call near mint in box with all the goodies all the straps it's gonna be 320 shipped priority mail that's the Seiko SRPA 83 patty tuna next up we got a sleeve we got we got a box of Oris inside the box of Oris we got a seven three three seven six five three four one five nine MB all right and that is an Oris Aquas here's the inner box There's the tag. Oris reference. So it is an aqua ceramic. Notice extra links are in the bottom of the box. Our little trim piece seems to have let go. Oh well. Check this out, guys. This is one of the coolest aquases I've ever seen. Black dial, just a matte black. Brushed finished ceramic bezel insert. Orange loom. Uh huh. Doesn't look orange when it glows, by the way. You've got that integral or proprietary bracelet, I guess you would call it. It is removable, and Oris makes a variety of rubbers that go on there. Brushed center links, polished end links, or polished outer links. Milled clasp. Three micro adjust dimensions on this aquas 43 millimeters in diameter 50 lug to lug 12 thick to a subtly double domed sapphire crystal Salita SW200 movement with the red Oris rotor and lug width is proprietary so you can't really go by that width or that width <clears throat> I think it's up there like 24 to the outside of these lugs or the outside of the top of this bracelet condition is excellent there are some hairlines in the bracelet a little bit of desk rash on the clasp and this consigner same guy that sold the last Oris he likes to lay them down not carefully nothing that a, a quick little polish can save but crystal and bezel are beautiful <clears throat> uh, let's see I forgot to note the time this is running slightly quick uh, 10 to 15 seconds per day pricing references I found one watch used that sold on eBay and it wasn't this nice uh, it, it had a hack job polish done <clears throat> and it sold for $8.90 plus $30 in shipping um, these are I don't think you can buy this reference anymore but the non in-house movement aqua ceramics now are selling up close to two grand this one can be yours 795 shipped priority mail. That's the Oris Aquas 0173376534159 MB. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of another weekly knife sale on the Apostle P channel. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp. Have at her, boys. <laughs>